This is the first commentary video I've done on this channel which reacts to someone else's YouTube video. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm Charles Simon, longtime AI researcher, software developer, and manager. In addition to AI work, I've developed software for several neurological test instruments and neural simulators, and along the way learned a lot about the capabilities and limitations of biological neurons and how your brain must work to do the things it does. I recently watched a video with the title Dendrites, Why Biological Neurons Are Deep Neural Networks on Artem Kirsanov's channel and wanted to correct a few misleading points on what otherwise is an excellent video with clear explanations and outstanding animations. If you have an interest in neuroscience, it's well worth a look. But starting with that title, Dendrites Why Biological Neurons Are Deep Neural Networks, this is simply false, as I'll explain in a few moments. Fortunately, the content of the video doesn't really support the title, so we can let this go as just being a bit of clickbait, which has garnered a quarter of a million views, a lot for a technical video. But in Artem's defense, a quick look at the list of references shows that the title could flow directly from the underlying research papers. So, after Artem's intro, he gives a description of the perceptron model, which forms the basis for most artificial neural networks. Early neural networks were indeed inspired by the descriptions of biological neurons, which people thought to be accurate at the time. In fact, the birth of machine learning as we know it can be traced back to 1943, when Walter Pitts and Warren McCulloch introduced the notion of a perceptron. Despite the fancy name, the idea is quite simple. The perceptron was created to function like an individual nerve cell, which in this doctrine works like a simple summator and comparator. This just means that it receives the, an input set of numbers, multiplies them by some coefficients, also called weights, sums everything together, and compares the result with a threshold. If the resulting value exceeds the threshold, the perceptron sends a number 1 as an output to its neighbors. He neglects to mention that the simplest model of actual neuron function, the integrate and fire model, was published in 1907 and the perceptron model is significantly less powerful because it ignores the time domain. I'll provide examples if you like. Perceptron-based models are in widespread use in neural networks largely because the mathematics is much simpler. Artem moves on with a fundamental description of the biological neuron. If you open any neuroscience textbook, one of the first things you'll see is the structure of a typical neuron, usually consisting of dendrites, soma, or cell body, and an axon. Artem then gives details of the chemistry by which neurons work, which I found really interesting, which I'll summarize by saying, Signals come in via synapses to the dendrites and contribute ions. When the incoming signals exceed a threshold charge at the cell body, the cell body creates a neural spike which propagates down the long axon through synapses which connect to the dendrites of other neurons completing the picture. The overall thrust of Artem's video is to show that far from being just signal aggregators, Dendrites can do interesting calculations on their own, and he demonstrates this clearly. Sounds good to me. Now the trouble begins. Part of the dendritic calculation relies not only on the normal propagation of neural signals toward the cell body, but on signals in the reverse direction, which are labeled as backpropagation. While signals may go whatever direction they like in the dendrites, this backpropagation has nothing to do with the gradient descent algorithm of neural network backpropagation. 
We're just using the same word to mean two completely different things, which is common in English, but then confusing which thing we mean. In order for the gradient descent algorithm to exist in biology for neurons to act as a deep neural network, signals would have to pass in the reverse direction through synapses and along axons. There is no evidence this happens and substantial evidence that it does not. The synapses which connect one neuron to another are essentially one-way devices, and there is no known way for an error signal to propagate in the reverse direction across multiple layers of biological neurons to impact earlier synapse weights. When a neuron fires, while the spike travels down the axon, the signal must also travel back down the dendrites to the incoming synapses in order for the synapses to reset themselves and for any synapse weight adjustments to take place. But please don't call this backpropagation. And if you must, please don't confuse it with the backpropagation of the gradient descent algorithm. Moving on. Artem then introduces NMDA channels, which I won't dwell on. Among the interesting calculations performed by the dendrites you find determining the order of arrival of multiple incoming signals and acting as an exclusive OR function. Artem provides an excellent explanation of the neurochemistry by which this happens. But detecting the order of two inputs could already be represented by the integrate and fire model, and adding a few more modeled neurons extends this to any number of inputs. Nardum then moves on with a description of logical functions and the problem of creating an exclusive OR function. For example, the ANTA gate receives two inputs and outputs one if and only if both of the inputs are one, while the OR gate outputs 1 when at least one of the inputs is equal to 1. This is also known as inclusive OR, because the output is true when both of the inputs are true as well. So if we view the inputs as Venn diagrams, the intersection is included. There is another useful operation which is called exclusive OR, or XOR for short. As the name suggests, the XOR gate outputs true when exactly one of the inputs is true, but not both. By the way, notice that this agrees with our everyday interpretation of the word OR. When we say things like, would you like a cup of coffee or tea, the word OR is usually understood in the exclusive sense. And in computers, XOR can be used for things like comparing two numbers. As an historical perspective, in the 1980s, one of the first AI winters was caused when Roger Penrose showed how individual perceptrons could not represent an exclusive OR function. He ignored the fact that three perceptrons can represent that function, but the damage was done. Now, Artem explains how the dendrites of an individual neuron can form this exclusive OR function, too. While this is fascinating, I'm not sure it is groundbreaking. Having done a lot of neural simulation myself, these calculations could always be implemented with much simpler models if you model the dendrites of a single biological neuron with two or three simpler integrate and fire neurons. The video continues with a section describing how simulating a dendrite accurately required an eight-layer convolutional neural network. There is a promising future for the synthesis of ideas from modern neuroscience and deep learning. In particular, I would like to conclude this video by discussing a very elegant paper titled Single Cortical Neurons as Deep Artificial Neural Networks. The authors then trained a deep convolutional neural network with various number of layers to see if it could learn the complex input-output relationship of the biophysical model when the network receives the identical set of synaptic inputs. As a result, they found that it required between 5 and 8 layers 
to accurately predict output spikes at voltage values of the detailed model. I don't doubt it. This doesn't mean that the function of the dendrite is itself representative of a neural network. You can also use a deep neural network to simulate a mechanical system like a complex pendulum, but you would never suggest that the mechanism acts as the deep neural network as the video subhead claims. So, neurons are amazing, but let's try to keep our enthusiasm in check. When we get to the video's conclusion, I once again agree with everything Artem says. All right, let's recap. In this video, we have seen how the presence of voltage-gated ion channels turns dendrites from being merely passive conductors of electricity to active computational units. Moreover, individual dendritic branches have the capacity to perform exclusive OR operation on their inputs, a type of computation that was previously thought to require multi-layered networks. And finally, we have seen how the complex input-output transformations of information inside biological neurons require a computational power of a whole convolutional deep neural network. So hopefully I was able to convince you that even at the level of single cells, the brain is incredibly complex and fascinating, and that next time you hear statements that individual neurons essentially function like linear summators, you will take those claims with a grain of salt. If you've stayed with me so far, be sure to let me know if you think I should create similar commentary videos. Also, consider joining the Future AI Society to participate in our neural modeling and enhanced graph-based AI projects. And as always, thanks for watching.